What's up, half centenarians? So you know I am a woman on the move and I hang around women on the move. That's why I'm at the Woman on the Move conference. I want you to check out all of these wonderful people doing wonderful things. And we have a lady that is 92 years old that went from a resident to a president. I'm gonna let her tell you how she did that. Amazing. Just amazing stuff. I gotta go. Check this out. This is Dolores Wilson, the woman on the move, the woman of the hour. She is 92 years young, you guys. Wait a minute, I gotta tell you this though. So you went from resident of of Cabrini Green building. Have y'all not heard of Cabrini Green? Okay, Everybody. then, right? Then you went to president, president of our building. Okay, and then from president to CEO. Come on, say that one more time. CEO. Yes. <laughs> Talk about a woman on the move, a woman on the move. And Ms. Wilson says to tell you, keep moving, keep doing things, find somewhere that you fit. Is that right? That's right, because I start off with children, little bitty children. And you found your way. Older people being, because we had to have a manager As a and secretary and all. Look yes. at you! <laughs> congratulations, congratulations, young lady. Thank you. You are Thank welcome. you guys. We are here with Tamari Scott from B Mary's. Oh my gosh, you have to visit her spot. First of all, the location, the information, everything in there is phenomenal. And that's why this woman has been honored as a woman on the move. Thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate it. I know you guys have come out and done some interviews at the venue right. and it's just really been great. I mean, Be Mary's was not only established to be an events and art studio, but to be a launching pad and an open door for other people to launch their businesses and services to do many things. So I just thank you guys for coming out and patronizing. And Let me tell you what, we have to support and I'm going to tell you right now, you have so many eclectic areas in that building that it, I mean, honestly, you guys, you need to take a look at it. And I do want to ask you, because this night hasn't been around that long, right? How long have you been? Well, I've only been in business with my brick and mortar for about three years now. And so what I do is I feature artwork from local artists, and I allow them to place it on consignment for up into a year, because I want them to get the feeling of just being able to get their artwork out there, to get, you know, to capture some people that want to see what they do and get to understand who they are. But you know, I want to first of all just say thank you so much for allowing us. Even though it's an events place, there's a lot of people who don't know about it. And for me, I was one of those individuals. And so word of mouth got me to you. That's why I wanted to be able to share your um, story, your building, your dream, your vision with everyone else. And I love that you have been rec um, recognized by the woman on the move, Dr. Kim McNair, collab, her Raider of the Year. Yes, it is. And that's what you're doing, collaborating, collab her rating mm -hmm. so congratulations again i'll see you inside but Thank beautiful you. person beautiful mission be beautiful moment Thank you. all right guys we are at the woman on the move and we are here um out looking at some of the services that are being provided wonderful things that are happening today so i'm gonna allow um, my wonderful guests here to introduce herself and tell us a little bit about what they're doing um and then you're gonna see why it's important Hello, my name is Natalie McCall Gaston. I'm a nurse practitioner. I uh, am one of the owners at Community Holistic Advanced Practice Nurses in Austell, Georgia. Um, we are here providing um, vaccines. We have the Moderna and the Pfizer, and we're also providing 24-hour um, testing for the COVID. Um, we are doing this because we want to provide service to our community. We want to make sure that everyone is healthy and we have, we're answering all questions in regards to fears regarding the vaccinations and what, who should, what should, and you know, when to get it. Um, yeah, so that's basically what we're here for. We're pro providing those services today. So that is, brings me to one of the questions that I have is, what is one of the biggest um, fears or questions you have regarding hesitancy for taking the vaccination? Well, the hesitancy right now, um, most of the people are just not sure, they're not trusting. Unfortunately, I hear a lot of stuff regar regarding the government and the mm -hmm. testing and the fears that they have. Um, even my own family members have fears. Right. They're still right. going back to the Tuskegee's in relation to our people. So that's the one of the largest fears of if, it, if they can trust um, what's in the vaccine. 
Um, another fear that they have is um, in basic, um, is it really needed? What effect they'll have on their body later on because everything seemed to have rolled out so fast. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, and what side effects they would have. So they weren't offered or provided the information of the actual side effects. Um, how would it affect them if they get the vaccine? And then they're hearing bits and pieces of, okay, the first time I'm, I should have the, I have the vaccine, it's not gonna be that bad. The second time I may have some aches and pains, but they're not given all the information. So it's, it's a lot of questions and what it would do to our children. You know, the third one I'm hearing about is the um, supposable newness of the technology that is used to provide the vaccine, the, the RNA, you know, technology, right. when in actuality is not all that new, it's just that they weren't using yeah. it in fact, and yeah. they haven't provided that yeah. information. Um, to go outside, but to speak of, you know, um, like for example, Roland Martin had mentioned, uh, yeah, if they had put it through the black community, through our media, through yeah. our information, we would have been more likely to understand and pay attention and get vaccinated. But we do have like we have like a resident doctor that we have with the half centenarians. And he said the same thing. Like when you are trying to get information to a community, you use those people to stand in front of them. So I would just like to add. So do you think there's going to be an uptick, especially now that they're talking about a booster shot and all that kind of stuff? So we only have like 15% or something like that of the um, African-American community that's... Right, I was hearing between 10 and 15. Yeah. The last I had uh, checked on it, yeah. So how? So this is my question and my final question would be, we have 15% of people that are vaccinated and then as the year, the months go on, they're, the level of that being um, useful because it kind of dwindles in your body or something like that. So if we have 15% of people who took it, get the booster shot, how is that going to impact what we're doing as far as COVID is concerned if we're still dealing with the same 15 percent? How we, how do you think we can get people to get more comfortable? Do we need to put more black people in front of them or things like that is kind of what I'm asking. I think that if, yes, yeah, so if we have more people who represent us mm -hmm. um, out there talking about it, um, ex alleviating fears, yeah. uh, I think that, yeah, we would have more people um, who would participate. Um, a lot of our people are, like to go more natural, and so therefore there are a lot there are a lot of fears in that direction too. Um, but you know, I've always told my patients, you know, first of all, we can't force you to take it, but you know, you have to look at the way technology is not just for those people. I'm gonna say it that way, but for our people. We have benefited a lot from a lot of these healthcare technologies and they, we've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and so the concerns that they're having, legitimate concerns, but we just need to be in front of our people telling them as much as we can. Unfortunately, you're gonna have those that just won't do it. Yeah. Well, we do, yeah. We do, and, and I think everyone has that kind of situation where um, part of the family's vaccinated, the other part is not. So I just wanna tell you, thank you for what you're doing here and just really trying to educate the population. I don't know what it's going to take. I don't think anyone really does. If we knew that, we would fix it now. Well, I just yeah. think that people would really consider it because we're really putting our most vulnerable in danger. Um, we've like we've losing people because they're not getting vaccinated, you know. And I understand the fears, but we're actually putting the ones who are most vulnerable in danger because we're concerned about it. But the most strongest ones, if our strong people get the vaccine, then our weaker ones are more protected. And a lot of it's a lot more of us dying because we're not getting the vaccine than they are protecting themselves for not getting it. And that's. Yeah. That's a good statement to conclude on. If the stronger of the of the group would get the vaccination, we can protect the weaker part of our population. I don't know, but let's just think about it. We compel you and implore you just to get educated about it. And we have someone here in the medical industry now telling us it's worth getting ourselves vaccinated to protect the weaker part of the population. That's it, we're here at the Women on the Move and we are here with the woman on the move. Thank good, you. All right, good day, half centenarians. Guess what? We are here with the women on the move. Yes. The primary woman on the move right here, Dr. Kim McNair. And then we have... Joy A. Stokes. Joy A. Stokes, but you guys are collaborators like the originals, right? Yes. yes. That's right. Her raiders, yes, play on words. That's. 
Just get that right. All right. <laughs> so talk to us. How long have you been doing this? I am so excited to be here and be a part of it this year. Yes. But how long has it been going on? Uh, as far as us collaborating? The uh, summit and all of this. Stuff oh, gosh, the summit is eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, we met back in 2000. Was it 18 mm -hmm. when we started? We yeah. met in 18 with her product called the Joystick. Mm -hmm. It's that mobile, that, that device where you can put all your different mobile pieces on there, your phone, your iPad, and you're able to stream from multiple platforms. Mm -hmm. Or you can have other people stream. Mm -hmm. And you can stream out, stream in, however you want. Mm -hmm. We need to talk. We met. Okay. That's how we met. Yeah. And on the radio. She, on the, you came on the radio. That's right. I was on the radio yep. to talk about the Women on the Move Summit. Mm -hmm. And wow. with that, um, we were able to do that. And she provided me the joystick to use for one of the summits. Mm -hmm. I was doing it actually at the Georgia Power Building downtown. Mm -hmm. And it just went from there. So we've collaborated on quite a few different mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. We collaborated. And it just was something like a marriage made in heaven. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. See how things happen? Sense. That's it why, like sense. the young lady said in there, you have to be here in the building talking yes. to people. You never know who you are around. Mm -hmm. So I had no idea. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what your, the joystick and all that stuff and collaborators. You got a lot to share. We're going to do a show. <laughs> so, uh, again, my name is Joy A. Stokes. I'm actually a full-time corporate event photographer. Um, the way that we connected, we also added on Sabrina Lowry um, because Sabrina was at Kim's event. She saw Joystick, which is uh, a, um, a live stream tool to allow you to live stream or record on multiple platforms simultaneously. So Joystick, J-O-I, like my name, S-T-I-K dot com. Um, and we just did so much stuff together that during the pandemic, we were like, you know what? We have collaborated um, in our own gifting. You know, Kim has her, her way of of bringing business I do yeah. and Sabrina and so we were like let's put this all together to teach women how to you know take a business from just the inception to actually growing it and it being profitable and so um, so again I, I, I yeah, I mean, I think we were doing photography too. Yes, we were doing I was photography. Doing, I was doing photography mm -hmm. as well too, which if you uh, look at her, her planner, the photo on her planner is one of the photos of her, that, I, right. that I took. Yeah. So yeah, which is, which is also an amazing planner to pick up. Yes. Hint, hint, yes. The trifecta, here they are, the collaborators themselves. Yeah, they have this stand down. Look. They have it down pat. That's how, yeah. If you ever watch any of the social media, this is how they walk down the street. This is how they talk. They're in yes. So I just wanted to to commend you guys. I'm glad you had a chance to come out here with us. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Sabrina, and then how did you get involved with this wonderful venture as well? Yes, my name is Sabrina Lowry, and I am the tech evangelist. I am the third part to the collab her Raiders, and we are a multifaceted, multimedia, photography and technology digital events planning company and we do more we do way more yeah. but i am the broker and owner of legacy realty and management and i am also the chief technology officer of sabrina lowry enterprises all right she has a a face for television and a voice for radio i love it i love it you guys are doing phenomenal things so i am so excited to have been here been able to see the panelists been able to see the people that you were recognizing today those three beautiful women i think we got all of those wonderful ladies recognized as well so we can share them. Yay. Just wanted to say, you know what? Women on the move, doing great things. Yes, half centenarians. Yeah. They have to be on the move, but thank you guys so much. Turn, give me a, give me a little side. Hey. hey. All right, women, half centenarians, there's no excuses. You just saw all kinds of women doing great things, giving out vaccines and um, Cabrini Green, CEO. You have Joystick, you have Sonia Lowry, Dr. Kim McNair, Becky Davis, and I don't even have time to mention all of those people. But what I do know is this, there's no reason why you're not gonna be a woman on the move because that's what we're here to do, you guys. Half Centenarians doing our best thing. So I want you to like, share, comment, subscribe. You got a lot to do in a short time to do it, but we're here to help you. Have a good one. We'll see you soon.